In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get Kali or Kali Linux, if you prefer, up and running with the VMware Workstation Player on a Windows 10 computer. There are multiple ways to run Kali these days. You could use WSL version two, you could use VirtualBox, you can use VMware Workstation Player. Multiple ways to do it. I'm gonna show you the example of running a virtual machine within VMware Workstation Player, which has some advantages over WSL version two or VirtualBox. If you wanna see other methods of running Kali on a Windows 10 laptop, use the links below this video. I'm gonna show you in this video how to install VTX in the BIOS of your computer. I'm gonna show you how to download and install VMware Workstation Player, which is free hypervisor virtualization software. I'm gonna show you how to download 7Z software. I'm gonna show you how to download a pre-built virtual machine from Kali.org, import that into VMware Workstation Player, boot that up and get Kali up and running on your laptop as you can see over here. Now before we continue, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. That really does help me with the YouTube robots. Please consider liking this video and clicking on the bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. I cover a whole range of technical topics on my YouTube channel. VMware Workstation Player is a hypervisor that allows you to virtualize other operating systems on Windows. So we're gonna have Windows installed on the hardware of our laptop. In this example, I'm using this Windows laptop over here. So I'm gonna be doing everything on that laptop, but I'm controlling it from my Mac. So once again, Windows is installed on the hardware of this laptop. And then what we're gonna do is run virtualization software, in this case, VMware Workstation Player on Windows and then install Kali Linux within a VMware Workstation Player. VMware Workstation Player is what's called a type two hypervisor because we are running a hypervisor that allows us to virtualize operating systems on a host operating system. So we've got our hardware, which is our laptop, then we've got Windows, then we've got VMware Player, and we are running Kali within a VMware Workstation Player. In this example, I'm using Windows 10 Home Edition. So you don't need Windows 10 Professional Edition to do this. I'm running a 64-bit operating system. One of the things you're going to need to do, however, is enable VTX in the BIOS of your computer. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems running 64-bit operating systems such as Kali on Windows. So what I'm gonna show you now is how to enable VTX in the BIOS of your computer. If you've already got VTX enabled in the BIOS of your computer or AMD V, then skip to this timestamp in the video so that you just go straight to the installation. But it is a prerequisite to have VTX or AMD V enabled in the BIOS of your computer. Now in this example, I've got an Asus laptop. It's got an Intel CPU and I've got an HP laptop that's got an AMD CPU. The process that you follow will vary depending on the manufacturer. So on Asus as an example, I need to reboot the laptop and press F2 to go into the BIOS settings. On HP, I need to use F10 to go into the BIOS settings. So refer to the documentation for your manufacturer to determine which key you need to use to get into the BIOS. Or just use Google to do a search to find out which key to use to get into the BIOS for your specific laptop or computer. So I'll now show you how to enable VTX on a laptop that has an Intel processor as well as a laptop that has an AMD processor. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is shut the laptop down. So I'm gonna click power, shut down to shut the computer down. Laptop has been shut down. Now because this is an Asus laptop, I need to press power and F2. So F2 will take me to the BIOS. And as you can see, I'm now in the BIOS of the computer. So they tell you which keystrokes to use. So as an example, right arrow will take me from one menu to the other. So I've gone from the main menu to advanced. And what I wanna enable is Intel virtualization technology. At the moment, it's disabled. So I wanna select that option, once again, using the arrow keys, go to Intel virtualization technology, press enter, and then specify enabled. So what I'm gonna do now is use the right arrow key, go to save and exit, make sure that I've selected save and exit, press enter, and then press enter again to save the configuration and exit. 
Laptop is now rebooted. And now I can enter my PIN and log in. And there you go. Okay, so I'll do something similar on this computer with an AMD processor. Go to the Start menu, I'll select Power Options, and I'll select Shut Down to shut down the computer. Computer is now shutting down. Okay, this is a HP laptop, so I need to use F10. So I'll start the laptop, press F10. Okay, so something similar needs to be done here. I'm going to go to System Configuration, Virtualization Technology. So Virtualization Technology is currently disabled. What I need to do is press Enter, select Enabled, press Enter, and then I need to exit. So save my configuration and exit. Press Enter to save the changes. The laptop is now rebooted. We can see that the HP laptop is booting up. This is an older laptop, so it's quite slow. Okay, I need to put my password in, press Enter to log in. I've now successfully logged in. So what I'm gonna do now is download a pre-built Kali virtual machine from Kali.org. So go to Kali.org. On the downloads link, I'm gonna download Kali Linux. And scrolling down, I'm gonna download Kali Linux 64-bit for VMware because I'm using VMware Workstation Player. Again, you could download a version for VirtualBox. This is available on the Offensive Security website. So clicking on that link, I'm gonna to go to Kali Linux VMware 64-bit, and I'm gonna download version 2020.3. This is a 7Z file. It's about 2.2 gig in size. It's gonna take, according to this, about 25 minutes. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to download the prerequisite software. First thing I need is virtualization software. VMware have recently released VMware Workstation 16. Under the downloads link, go to free product downloads, Workstation Player. This will allow us to run the Kali virtual machine for free within Windows. Now they're still showing 15.5 at the time of this recording, but when I click on the download now link, it's actually downloading VMware Player version 16. So I'll need to install VMA Workstation Player to be able to import the Kali virtual machine. This is also a 7Z file, so I'm going to download 7Z or 7Z software. So in this case, 7-zip, and I'm gonna download the executable for Windows 64-bit. So I've got a 64-bit version of Windows, so that's the software that I'm gonna download. It's about 1.4 meg in size. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is install VMA Workstation Player. So I'll double click on the executable file. Microsoft complains that this isn't a Microsoft verified app. I'm gonna click Install Anyway. Say yes to allow VMware to make changes to the computer. And as you can see there, the VMA Workstation Player 16 installation has started. This is a very simple wizard. You're basically just gonna go with the defaults. I'm gonna click Next. You need to agree to the license agreement. This software can only be used for non-commercial reasons. So, so as an example for studying, which is what we're doing here. I'm gonna click Next. Click Next. I'm not gonna join the VMware Custom Experience Improvement Program. Click Next. Click Next again. And I can now click Install. But before I click Install, I wanna show you that in Control Panel, Network and Internet, Network and Sharing Center, Change Adapter Settings. I don't have a VMware network card. I've got VirtualBox, I've got a Team Viewer, and Wi-Fi connection, but I don't have a VMware network card. But when I click Install now, you'll notice that network interface cards are added to your computer. That's normal behavior for VMA Workstation. So the installation continues. 
VMware Workstation Player 16 has been installed. You can see an icon has been created. And what we should see now is that network adapters are added to control panel on this computer. And there you go, there's one network adapter. And here's another one. The VMware Workstation Play installation has completed. I'll click Finish. Okay, so I've installed VMware Workstation Player. Now I need to unzip the 7Z file that we downloaded from Kali and then import the virtual machine into VMware Workstation Player. That Kali download says it's still 21 minutes, so I'm gonna cancel that because I previously downloaded the 7Z file in anticipation for this video. In my experience, I found that it takes time to download these files from the Kali website, so what I've done is I've pre-downloaded this. But you can see it's a 7Z file, so what I need to do is run the 7Z installation software so that I can unzip that file. I'm gonna run the software anyway. Click yes to allow it to make changes and click install. Software is now installed, so what I can do on the 7Z file is right click, go to 7-zip, and extract the files to a Kali Linux directory. So there you go, the files are now being extracted. We can see that various files are being extracted. So you just need to wait for the files to be extracted and then we'll be able to import them into VMware. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna double click on the VMware Workstation Player icon on my desktop to start VMware Workstation Player. I need to select whether I'm gonna use the software for non-commercial use or enter a license key for commercial use. I'm not gonna use it for commercial use, so I can click Continue to start VMware Workstation Player. I'm told, thank you for using the software. Click Finish to start it. VMware Workstation Player has now started, and notice the files have now been extracted. There's a prompt introducing VMware Workstation 16 Pro. I'm not worried about that, so I'm gonna skip this version because I wanna use the free VMware Workstation Player software. Okay, so now let's import Kali Linux because that's actually what we wanna do here. I'm gonna to go to Player, File, Open, go to my Downloads directory, go to the extracted Kali 2023 directory, open the VMware VM directory and select the VMX file in that directory and click Open. So just be aware that I'm running this virtual machine and they're all the files that have been extracted in my downloads directory. You may not wanna do that. You may actually wanna move that to a different directory. So as an example, you may wanna to go to documents of virtual machines and run it directly in the virtual machines directory. I've got a whole bunch of virtual machines there. They're not showing up in VMware Workstation Player, but you may wanna move Kali to that directory. As an example, I've got Kali 2021 in this directory. Okay, so let's edit the virtual machine settings and make sure that everything looks good. Two gig of RAM is fine for this virtual machine. I'm gonna reduce the number of processors to two. You basically need to make sure that the virtual machine settings are compatible with your laptop. Hard disk is 80 gig, that's fine. Network adapter, I'm gonna use bridged rather than NAT because I wanna be able to remotely connect to the Kali virtual machine and I want it to have an IP address in the same subnet as my physical network. In this case, it's gonna bridge the Kali virtual machine to my wireless adapter. So again, on my PC, under control panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, I'm bridging Kali to this Wi-Fi adapter on my laptop. Everything else looks good, so I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna click play a virtual machine to start the virtual machine up. Now I'm asked, have I moved this or copied this virtual machine? In my example, I copied it, so I'm gonna click I copied it, and there you go. Kali is now booting within VMware Workstation Player on my Windows 10 laptop. I'm gonna log in with the default username of Kali, default password of Kali, and click login. 
I can move the virtual machine around. I can resize it. It's automatically resized within VMware Workstation Player. I could, as an example, open a console. I'll just zoom in here. And I can, as an example, ping google.com from this virtual machine. I'll stop that. IP address will show me the IP address of the Kali Linux virtual machine. It's 192.168.165. So on my Mac, this is my local Mac in front of me, I'm going to open up a terminal and I should be able to ping 192.168.165, which I can. So I have IP connectivity from Kali to the outside world and I can connect to Kali from devices in my network. I could, as an example, open up a web browser. And as an example, I'll search date today to see what today's date is. And you can see the date is Saturday, 26th of September, 2020. So there you go. I've got Kali Linux up and running within VMware Workstation on my Windows 10 laptop. I could log out here and shut the virtual machine down. Start VMware Workstation Player again. Select 2020.3 and click play to start up the virtual machine. Okay, so I've shown you now in this video how to get VTX enabled in the BIOS of your computer, how to download VMware Workstation Player, free virtualization software from VMware, install that on your Windows 10 computer. I've shown you how to download a pre-built virtual machine from Kali.org and then import that into VMware Workstation Player, and then how to start the virtual machine within VMware Workstation Player. So I've got Kali or Kali Linux, if you prefer, running within VMware Workstation Player on a Windows 10 laptop. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best. I've been